get started today with um, the April 17th meeting for the teaching and learning call. Um, I'm Wilma Hodges. I'll be moderating today's uh, session because Trisha and Matt both had conflicts. So I'll be the facilitator today as well as one of the presenters. <laughs> so, um, I'll be wearing a couple of different hats today. Um, but uh, before we get started with that, I did paste the Etherpad link into the chat um, with today's agenda and notes. Um, and as we always do, um, we start off with project updates and announcements. So, um, so I do have one announcement um, about um, the Open Imperio meeting in um, in June. If you are planning on attending, which I hope you are, registration is still open. It's open through May uh, 3rd for early bird. So if you want to get the early bird rate, um, you still have a little bit of time left to do that. And also the hotel um, room block, I believe the, the reservation deadline for the room block is also May 3rd. So you'll want to get those reservations at the hotel made. Um, as soon as you can and um, the if you are planning to attend the conference um, we typically have some Sakai community meetings that follow the main Aperio um, program um, so I, I did put a survey out and I will paste the link also in the chat but it's in the, um, the etherpad notes as well it's just a quick survey to see, you know, how many folks are going to be there so we can plan for what size room we need and what times people anticipate being there. I know um, folks tend to leave to, to head back at different times. You know, I wasn't sure how many people were staying on, um, you know, through Thursday or part of Thursday. Um, you know, if, if Thursday morning was going to be where there were going to be enough people there to have a, a productive meeting, um, that sort of thing. So um, if you are planning on going to Open Aperio and you think that you might be attending the community meetings, please fill out that survey just to give us kind of a, a rough head count um, for planning purposes. So um, those are all the announcements that I have. Um, does anybody else have any announcements that they would like to share with the group? Um, I'm seeing a question from Terry in the chat. Is Miguel scheduled for his presentation on the video tool in May? Um, I, I believe that he was. Let me, let me look and see if it's on. The, um, the Confluence page for teaching and learning if it says what week. Let me just check. Um, yes, he's on the schedule for May 15th. So it looks like he'll be um, he'll doing some, the multimedia assignment submissions, um, which is the audio and video uh, assignment submission option. And May 1st is open, by the way. So if anybody has something that they would like to share um, in the next session, um, that, that meeting is open. If we don't have any takers, we can always do a Jira Palooza. There's always numerous Jiras for um, the teaching and learning group to review and comment on. So, um, but if anybody does have something that they would like to share, let me know. Um, Adam is noting that the form requires you to answer question two, even if you say no to question one. Um, yeah, if you say no to question one, it's kind of moot. You don't really need to fill out the survey. <laughs> so if you're not planning to attend it at all, then um, you can just select the probably won't attend option for, uh, for the meetings themselves. Okay. No other announcements? All right. Let's see. I don't see Miguel on the call. I'm not sure if he was planning to join us. Um, I see that Josh has joined us. Hi, Josh. Um, so we can kind of fill you in on the, the background of this. Um, Badges have been sort of a, a, a pet project of mine for a long time. I really wanted to see badges in Sakai because um, there are some really neat uh, things you can do with them and, and the sort of gamification concept um, was one that was uh, very appealing to me. So I was, you know, interested in ways to, to gamify 
components of Sakai and to be able to award badges and other things for um, completion of items. Um, so there's some ways that you can do this manually um, and that's been kind of you know, all we could do because there was no direct integration um, with a badge issuing service. And I've actually given presentations um, to the teaching and learning group um, in the past and at past Aperio conferences on how to do sort of the manual um, piece of it. But um, and the building of badges and um, how they're awarded. So I'm not going to go into any of that stuff. But um, but the, again, the integration piece has always been something that people have asked about. Is something that um, often comes up in RFPs, and um, you know, it's just something that we would like to be able to offer to folks. And so um, we were talking with um, with Marist um, particularly, and I don't know if is there anyone on the call from Marist. Um, I don't see Jewel in. So, okay, maybe not. Um, Marist had uh, recently entered into a contract with Credly because they were um, implementing badges at the institution and um, and they wanted a, an integration with Sakai. Um, so um, Josh and I, you know, talked with the Marist folks. We talked with the Credly folks. Um, Credly was very interested in um, getting an integration built um, between Sakai and Credly because they do like to integrate with all the, the major systems out there. And so they would love to be able to add Sakai to their list of, of things that they integrate with directly. Um, and, uh, and so, we, you know, we did a little bit of research. We met with Miguel and, and the EDF group to see if they um, had capacity to do this. And um, because our developers were sort of fully engaged with other community projects. Um, and so Miguel and his group put together this um, proposal based on our discussions about sort of a first phase for um, the Credly integration with Sakai. Um, and so I'll, I'll just kind of gloss over this in broad strokes to give you an idea of what we were thinking as far as this integration. But what I would like to um, kind of get started here is a discussion with you guys as to what your your interest is in badging. I mean, are you guys using them now? Are you interested in implementing them in the future? And is there another service? Is Credly the one that most folks are using? Or are there others that people are, are very interested in? I know recently, if you've been watching the Educause list, there was some discussion about Credly's um, purchase of Acclaim and the Acclaim um, API being a little different. And uh, I think there were some issues with single sign-on, but then there were some later messages saying that single sign-on was coming or was, you know, like about to be released for a claim. So, um, so basically there's a lot going on in that space, but we wanted to get some feedback from you guys um, as to uh, is there a preferred platform and, um, and how, how's, how's the best uh, way to approach uh, the integration with badging. So the Credly badge integration um, is is pretty straightforward, and it would come in, you know, kind of some different um, phases. So this this estimate that you're viewing here, this PDF file that I've uploaded, and I believe um, Josh, yeah, Josh put a, a link to the um, the document directly into the chat if you want to view it. Um, and, and where you can enlarge it a little bit because I know that the font may be a little bit small. Um, so the idea is that there are many badge issuing services. Credly is one. Um, it's one of the bigger ones. It's one of the more well-known uh, services and they you know, have a lot of customers and they integrate with a lot of platforms. But, um, but it is a third party thing. It does require, I believe, an institutional subscription in order to be able to issue, you know, to hook into it with the API interface and to be able to issue badges um, at the institution level. You can do it, you know, onesies and twosies manually um, for free. But if you wanted to kind of do a whole program, you kind of have to have an institutional subscription. Um, now, there are other services, as I said, there's a whole bunch of them out there. In fact, um, let me, I should have pulled this up before. It's, um, the, for those of you unfamiliar with, with the open badges specification, it's kind of like API. So it's, or um, LTI rather, it's kind of, um, it's, it's a, 
standard that is now managed by the IMS Global Learning Consortium. Um, they uh, used, it used to be by the Mozilla Foundation and now it's managed by IMS. So they're sort of the keepers of the standard. And um, if you go to their certified product directory, and let me search for open badges. Version two. Well, actually, we'll just do all open badges. All right, so I'm going to paste this link in here. Um, you guys can go directly there. I'm not going to try to do the whole big blue button sh screen share. <laughs> I decided to avoid that frustration today. Um, so I. Um, I did a search on their site for the open badges standard and you can see that there's a whole bunch of them. Um, there's a claim, there's a credible badger, CBOX, um, credly, credly is in there a couple different times for different versions, digital me, I qualify, um, and the list goes on. So all of these different badge issuing services are basically the um, application that allows you to create a badge, decide, you know, um, how to you know send it to people um, and then uh, those people can claim it through that service and as long as they work with the open standard the open badges standard that badge can then be um, exported to other places where that that learner might keep it so they might have a badge backpack somewhere that they keep badges um, that they've earned from various different institutions so anything that that has that open badges standard should be interoperable with those backpacks should be able to um, be able to ex export it to those different platforms so they can kind of keep it because the whole idea behind badges is that it's sort of a uh, lifelong learning kind of thing you keep that credential and you can you know port it around and it, it travels with you it's more granular than say a degree and it might highlight a, a certain specific skill set that is um, hard to discern from you know maybe just the you know the the subject matter of a course or um, a particular degree program so so that's kind of the, the idea behind the open badges is it allows you to take those credentials with you um, so credly works with um, open badges as does uh, badger and several other um, platforms badger is an open source version of a, a badge issuing application um, and uh, the idea with this proposal is to create what we call a badge service so it's whoops I didn't mean to strike through I was trying to circle a little hard to control with my mouse. Um, all right, so the Sakai badges service. And for those of you familiar with plagiarism tools, you'll know that there's a content review service in Sakai that allows you to select a, um, a plagiarism detection provider. So it might be Turnitin, it might be uh, Verisite, it might be, um, what's another one? Uh, uh, Plag check, I think, is one, and um, Urkund, and, and there's a few others. So you kind of pull, you know, whichever one you're using. You set it up in the properties, and then you can use that one to issue, you know, to check for plagiarism. So the idea behind the badges service is similar: is that it would create um, kind of an integration that would be somewhat interchangeable. Um, and you could kind of plug in whichever service your institution decides to go with. Um, now for the first phase of this work, we may be limited to some of the APIs um, provided in Credly. Um, we did a little bit of research and there are a few different options there for integration. Um, but whichever platform is used, whether it's Credly or some other, this is what we were kind of thinking as far as the um, interface it would the badges would kind of live in the profile tool because the profile tool follows the user from course to course it kind of follows the user throughout the system and that's kind of what you want with badges um, so any earned badges would show up in the profile tool and um, you would also as the instructor be able to assign badges um, you know based on um, gradebook items um, now, the way this one works, it looks like the badges have to be created in Credly first. So you might have to actually go to Credly to set up the badges ahead of time, but then be able to issue them in Sakai. Um, those, again, are, are 
endpoints in the in the uh, the integration that we might have to kind of figure out what's the best fit there. And then also there would need to be an admin badging tool um, to configure the key and secret at the institution level because as I mentioned most of these services will require a institution level agreement to be able to issue badges system-wide so um, so that would need to be you know, put in there by an admin um, so there'd have to be kind of an admin component and then individual instructors could decide what they wanted to award badges for within a course um, so, um, so this is just a list of some of the important aspects about the authentication. It's a little more technical about how it um, handles the login password. This is again is specific to Credly. Um, SAML or LTI options are also available, but they might be a little bit um, more work. Uh, there is not currently an LTI uh, available, not for any of the badging systems that I've looked at, unless something brand new has come out um, that I'm unaware of. But uh, right now, as far as I know, all of the badging badge issuing um, platforms currently um, have APIs, but they don't have LTI. So it would need to be something that would be developed kind of from the ground up. Um, but the APIs are typically open and already published. And if we wrote something that would kind of tie into what's commonly used for the, the API um, endpoints in, in most badging systems, then it should be interchangeable with those. So um, some future improvements are printing badges. Um, that's something that Credly can do, but it's not a publicly available thing because it's kind of new. Um, so we might have to do a little tweaking there. Um, we thought about maybe tying it into bullhorns or notifications in some way to notify people when they have a badge available, when they've earned something, or maybe if there's a new badge available for them to earn. Um, and, you know, uh, potentially in the future, it might be um, you could add more tools instead of just being limited to gradebook items. Um, maybe you could add it to other tools. For example, maybe if you if you post um, X number of forum messages, you earn a badge for like you know great poster or something. Um, so there might be other applications in in other tools that are non gradebook uh, items that would. Uh, be sort of a good fit for badging. Um, and then allowing more customization of badges directly from Sakai without having to kind of have a, a selection of badges ahead of time um, and maybe, uh, you know, be able to give badges on demand as well. So those are all kind of future improvements that we've thought about, um, and uh, but they're not currently in this particular proposal. So um, so I know there's been a lot of chatter in the chat and I haven't actually had a chance to read through. So I'm going to try to back up here and see if there were any questions um, that I need to answer as I go. But anybody else on the call, I don't know, Josh, if you want to jump on the mic and um, if there's anything else you'd like to add to that. No, I don't think so. That was a that was a good summary. I mean, I uh, I carried forward the conversations from Friday's uh, long site client discussion about badges into the Etherpad today, so that people can look at them. The intent is to have this be uh, a two part conversation for more feedback. I'm going to stay mostly muted because it's kind of loud in here, and I won't subject you guys to that. But um, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see what people think, uh, where where this proposal works well, where it falls short, and should be improved. Great. Thanks, Josh. And thanks for post pasting those uh, questions in. So let me just um, read those off because those were some, some questions that um, that came up in the long site client um, meeting is, is, you know, potential privacy issues, um, not so much in displaying badges within Sakai, but um, providing name and email to Credly. Um, there, yeah. May, might be FERPA implications depending on what you're issuing the badge for. Um, so, you know, some institutions might have concerns about it, whereas others might not. Depends on how closely they keep that information. Um, another issue that was brought up as just a question, um, just throwing it out there if anybody has any thoughts. Um, how best to provide student control over this. Um, again, most of these, if they're using the open 
backpack or open badges standard they can export it to a backpack so there would need to be export capability so that people could kind of keep those um, but i believe that's usually handled by the issuing service whether it's credly or badger or claim or whatever um, uh, let's see how to address the institutional policy over which area owns badges. Um, that's a, an important one um, because you kind of have to figure out how you're going to do it at your institution and, and who's going to be in charge of, of, say, creating the badges, issuing the badges, um, monitoring, you know, validating badges. I mean, it, who's responsible to, for making sure that all of that is, is um, working as expected? And uh, also, is API the best way to proceed? Should we pursue LTI, um, perhaps via SUGI? I, I assume that was a question again from the um, the clientele group. And I don't know. I don't know if there is a way to use SUGI to, to tie that in. But we could certainly push some of the providers to develop LTI. Um, that is something that they have to kind of build in. Um, to be able to connect. I mean, we can build our end, but if their end of the bridge doesn't match ours, you're not getting across. So um, so we would have to kind of nudge them to, to do some development. Um, whereas the API, it would be more on us. We could just build it and it would work. Um, we don't have to necessarily wait for them to, to develop stuff. So um, yeah, so those are all open questions. I'm interested to see if anybody has any comments or uh, feedback um this is Davey Blund at uh, Johnson um any idea why Marist sort of decided to go with Credly Did, is there any sort of uh, because because there are so many different services um and sort of vetting out what the nuances are of the different services especially if none of them already have an LTI functionality um built in then um it, it sort of preference on why Credly was something they decided to go with. So for example, are other LMSs leveraging Credly over other uh, other sorts of these services? Or is there some sort of shiny part about Credly that just sort of sticks out for Marist? And I don't know no one's on the call from Marist, uh, but for other people that have had exposure and experience with other um, badge issuing services, is there anything that anybody can offer in that respect? And the other thing I'm kind of sort of curious about is, because we have such a good cost and what we're able to do with Sakai, adding this functionality is super great because whatever the cost is for these services, as long as it's not out of band, just simply becomes another thing that we can do to help our students meet with success and understand how they're doing that. Well, that was a lot to unpack there, Dave. So if I don't get to everything, remind me some of your questions. <laughs> but that's really, really great questions. Um, the first one about why did Maris choose um, Credly. Um, obviously, um, you know, there's nobody here from Maris to elaborate on that a little bit more, but in, in my recollection, my conversations with Julen, um, when they were sort of looking at a few different options, um, Credly seemed to be the most commonly used. It's kind of the biggest player in the, the badge space right now. They have the most integrations with the most um, systems. Um, they have uh, a really nice, you know, well vetted uh, set of features. Um, it, it's kind of one of the, the, you know, I guess market leaders, you would, you would say. So, um, so that's why they decided to go with, with Credly. It was well known. It was, you know, utilized at a lot of places and um, seemed to offer everything that they needed. Um, the price was not substantially different um, based on the ones that they had looked at. They had looked at mainly some commercial ones. They were looking at two or three different commercial ones. Um, so they decided to go with Credly for that reason. At least that's my recollection based on my um, conversations with Julen. Um, so if, you know, uh, maybe we could post it on the list and see if, if Marist has any additional information they want to add there. Um, is anybody using a badge service other than Credly? Anybody on the call have experience with any of the other ones? I think Charles, uh, Charles, was it you that said you guys had used something for one of your, uh, um, uh, I'm sort of speaking up, trying to see what was in the, 
somebody had said that they had used something for professional development uh, badge list. Yeah, that was me. This is Charles. Um, I wasn't. I haven't been totally involved with that, um, and I'm not quite sure if it's still ongoing. It doesn't look like they've they've approved. Um, issued any badges in the past um, year or so. So I'm not sure if that's an ongoing thing or not. Um, and I wasn't really involved with that. So I don't know what um, criteria they used for choosing the particular service that they did. Um, I think it was free. That was one thing. Um, I took, I'm at a loss to really say anything more about it, really, to be honest. <clears throat> All right, so Dave, I know you had a couple other questions. Um, refresh my memory on what those were, because I kind of got lost in the thread of conversation. Well, part of it was just simply thinking about, you know, what we're trying to do in terms of helping our students recognize where they are and, you know, how, how relevant it is for us to be awarding badges. Um, I'm not saying badges doesn't have a thing. Um, but in terms of, you know, when I stop and think about, you know, trying to make some sort of pitch about badges, especially within the context of a service, depending upon its cost. Um, you know, I think there, we, don't, we have our programs in our institution, but we don't have them so well scoped out that we could look, I could probably ask program directors, tell me the exact milestones that happen in your program, and then trying to link them up with specific um, badges um, might be sort of very difficult. Um, doing them at a course level, I think, could be beneficial. But I think one of the things that students might ask is, you know, so why, why are these relevant? What, what does this mean? And part of it goes back to a question I had earlier is, you know, so can, would students possibly be able to take their badges, say, if they transfer to another institution and they have value? Um, or is this more of a, it's really just sort of a eye candy kind of thing, even though it has some sort of digital certification that goes along with it about, you know, uh, the objectives or the outcomes that they met or something. I'm kind of looking for that uh, based on anybody else's experience, honestly. Yeah, the, as long as they, um, and I know from my experience using Credly um, in the past, they once you earn something in Credly, um, you can export that item and put it in different places. So it can be sent to Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, and you can kind of display it in different channels. Um, to show people the badges that you've earned. Um, and if it's something that's, um, you know, directly relevant to a, a skill that somebody might want to showcase for employers, it would be valuable in the sense that they could put it on their LinkedIn profile and, and kind of it becomes part of their digital portfolio. Um, it's sort of a, a piece to their resume, if you will. Um, so for that sense, those, those kinds of skills can be valuable. Now, as far as deciding, you know, what qualifies for a badge, whether that's at the course level or um, for individual skills, I mean, that's more of an institutional decision. I know there are certain systems that have um, kind of collaborated on um, some, you know, 21st century skills badges. And so they have like information literacy and research skills and soft skills, and each of those is a badge. And, um, and so you earn this collection of badges and then you can, you know, at the end of your academic career, you have this nice, um, you know, assortment of things that you can show employers. So there's different programs that have been done to kind of uh, quantify, you know, what, what a badge means. Um, I think that's really a separate question. It's certainly an important one, but it's a separate question from the technology used to deliver the badge. Um, in, in lots of ways, the technology piece is easier <laughs> because it's just sort of, you know, ones and zeros, right? Um, the, the other, the more um, thought-provoking piece is how, it, you know, how you make it so that it is something of value and why would people want to earn it and can they, you know, take it with them and will it mean something in another institution? Maybe it will. Um, maybe if you earn a certain set of badges and then you take that to like a graduate institution, your graduate program would recognize those as sort of, um, qualifying you for a certain track or something. Um, but those are kind of um, a little harder to pin down, I think, and they're still evolving. I think, um, this is Terry, I, I 
think that you're touching on something that's really key here that if the badge doesn't have intrinsic value it won't mean anything to an, a potential employer or graduate school to say that you've got a badge in soft skills and not have that clearly defined or have a set to a standard set of criteria so that it means the same thing here that it does over there makes a badge pretty meaningless. Yeah. I mean, the, the institution that's issuing the badge has to validate it and describe what it means to have earned it. So that's, I think, what, what gives it credibility. Um, so, you know, those kinds of things would need to be worked out um, for any badges that your institution would offer. Is, you know, how, what do students need to do to earn a badge? How are we going to validate? And, and when, when employers click on the link to see the description of the badge, you know, what's it going to say? It's going to have the institution that's issuing the badge and, um, and it's going to have a description of some sort. So it might itemize, you know, certain courses or certain things, requirements that a student has met. And, um, and sort of the name recognition of knowing that they did this and this and this and this at this institution um, means that they've got this particular skill. So, um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. It's definitely an important factor. I was going to add this uh, just so it's on the audio, but um, I, I want to say if students could maybe surface these badges somewhere that seems relevant to their Know, acquisition of employment or their continued you know uh, progress forward i know uh, i mentioned in the chat linkedin tends to do this they'll they'll a lot of times when i'm at their site and i don't visit it very often uh, but they're like hey you know you seem to have this or someone else you know validated you for this um and in a way if there was a way to surface these things uh you know maybe maybe the backpack provides a mechanism whereby i can export it and then throw it into my linkedin profile um, you know, and still has those sort of digital links that go back to the institution that actually, you know, vetted that particular badge, then I think you're starting to get to a place where there's, uh, there's, you know, in a way, social and professional currency. Um, um, so, so I think there, there could be traction there. Um, and now, now that's not going to work for everybody, but I think that's just a way to think about it. That's an excellent point, Dave. I'm just reading some of the stuff in the chat. Um, Sean, I don't know if you have a microphone. Did you want to say anything? Or should I just read off some of your stuff? Looks like he's just connected with headphones. So um, he, he mentioned that, that uh, Western is in a pilot. Um, so they're, they had a group that was trying to figure out the process, um, but it's kind of like degrees and diplomas from different educational institutions. Um, so they, um, they issue badges for completion of, of courses, I would imagine, or programs. Um, this is Dave again. Um, in looking at Sean's mentioning, that would be a very easy way for, I think, institutions to get on board with being able to provide badges. Because everybody, everybody has courses, and either students fail the course or they pass the course, um, and just the issuance of a badge could be a very easy way to say, well, they, they, it's 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 a badge of completion. It's not necessarily a badge of you know leveled excellence by way of you know this is an expert writer versus somebody else who's passed the course but not as good of a writer. Um, but I think that would be a very easy way um, because then at least in some ways I can see that within the structure of how Sakai does things by way of courses. They've completed the course, um, and then the badge could be issued. That sort of thing. That seems like it's a feasible way, at least on the inside of things, to do things. Um, and then, if that was portable somewhere else, that could be really neat. Okay. Oh, I see another um, note from Sean that there were multiple badges per course, and um, they were attached to course level outcomes. So that's also another way to go about it: is to think about the learning outcomes that you. Are all, all have all programs have them, um, so maybe mapping those badges to those desired learning outcomes um, provides another sort of scaffolding for for arranging you know what what constitutes a badge. Um, so that's another way to to look at it. Um, although uh, certainly mapping them to course completion and program completion is easy because all, the, all those structures are already set up you know we know which required courses feed into which degree pro program so that that 
work has already been done. Um, in a way, you just be replicating your, your transcript, but digitally in a sense. Um, but I think that um, mapping them to, to course outcomes is a really interesting way to, to approach it and possibly a more valuable one because it breaks out those discrete um, skills that you want students to come out of the program having. Well, then let me add to, I love that idea because a lot of, a lot of times I know in our courses, we've got uh, course level outcomes, program level outcomes, then we have lesson uh, lesson level outcomes if, if we can be that you know sort of discreet um, but i love that idea too because it also uh, i think does a better job of attaching uh, we should be doing this already in our courses and our programs but helping students to recognize that the reason why you're doing this particular task is to accomplish or demonstrate your your capacity to accomplish this particular outcome and while it sounds silly attaching a picture to the fact that that goes with that particular outcome can be very relevant because it means this is something I've, I know how to do this now. Um, even though students should be able to go back through and say, oh, well, I did these, uh, these tasks, that means I'm, I should be able to uh, address these particular outcomes. Uh, but I think in some ways that could be a very, uh, very tangible benefit. Yeah, I think so too. And there's something about, you know, having that little, you know, picture, <laughs> having that, that, um, that, badge in your backpack um there's some sort of you know kind of intrinsic you know sense of achievement at, at just earning it you know and i don't know if it's just me because I, I i get into that sort of thing but it's like you know collect them all and <laughs> you, you just kind of want to add things so you have more stuff in your backpack so um you know, for those of you who are scouts, you know, you probably have a similar sense um, that, you know, earning them in itself is kind of a fun activity um, in a way, or at least, you know, you can kind of gloat when you look at your, your list of stuff that you've earned. Heather, Heather's comparing it to Pokemon. Yeah, there you go. There's a reason Pokemon's popular. <laughs> People like that sort of thing. And uh, while it wouldn't certainly be the sole uh, motivation for a student to, to earn a degree, it, it kind of helps give them a little bit uh, extra oomph along the way, I think. So bottom line, I'm kind of curious, and I apologize again for the noise, but I had to ask this question. The, the tone of the conversation I'm hearing is that this is more of a nice to have than a need to have but the use cases aren't really that compelling uh is that uh is that really what what people think you know or is is there more support behind this than maybe is, is becoming apparent Josh, I think that kind of goes back to, to an earlier comment, and I forget who it was, and I don't feel like scrolling to find out. It might have been Sean about chicken versus the egg. Um, would the ability to, to do badges through Sakai kind of help um, impel some institutions to go forward with a, with a badging kind of thing, or is it being driven from the other other direction it's it's hard to tell um <clears throat> i don't know um i don't know if there's been much talk at our institution kind of at, at any departmental or programmatic uh level about doing badges i don't know i'm not aware of anything but that doesn't prove anything at all i might just not be aware that there's some discussion going on i'd have to probably put that out to our um our group as a whole and see if anybody else is, has heard anything. Yeah, I, my impression is that um, a lot of institutions are interested, but it takes some work to sort of get a successful badging initiative started. Um, and so some of them aren't quite sure where to start. And if there's any impediment to that process, like they're not being an integration, it ends up being a non-starter. So they kind of don't go you know, investing the energy to go down that route. Um, whereas it is something that keeps coming up. Um, it's, I think it's more than a nice to have. I think there are some valid 
pedagogical reasons why you might want to have a badging initiative. Um, and even maybe not even for for students, but for professional development or, you know, other kinds of, of training initiatives that you might be doing with you know, faculty and staff. Um, so, you know, there's there are a lot of compelling use cases, but I think that um, maybe that those have not been explored very deeply. Um, and part of the reason is because there's not an easy way to do it. So it, is, it comes back to that chicken and egg thing a little bit. Um, but uh, anyway, but that's just my impression. I know it's something that constantly comes up. Um, it's not one that is a new question that I never hear. It's something I see on almost every RFP. It's something that, that people ask me about quite a bit. Um, so I, I think it's on a lot of people's minds. It's just um, they don't always know how to get started. Um, this is a slight uh, different comment, uh, but it goes along the same uh, idea of thinking that if the road is paved, I think people could get there. Um, when I think about uh, maybe five to 10 years ago, when we were trying to do our crediting uh, documentation for SACS, um, we were doing all that stuff in the front page, um, Microsoft front page. Anybody remember that? Um, <laughs> and yeah, and so, I mean, obviously we, we've, we've migrated from that to other services that actually have come along and provided the infrastructure and you know organization and technical detail that provides all of that functionality so that external auditors can come in, look at that information, internal folks can actually go through and author that content and make sure it's all set up and linked the way it needs to be, uh, which was an absolute incredible headache with front page. Um, but what I'm thinking though is essentially, you know, this is part of the groundwork to be done in order to pave the way for badging to get to someplace. Um, while it could be a fad, I do see some, you know, higher education is changing a whole lot. Um, you know, far, far fewer students that are deciding whether or not to go to college because the piece of paper doesn't mean, mean as much because maybe other things mean more. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think this goes along with that idea if the way could be paved. Yeah, I think it's an important thing for Sakai to be able to have. Um, that's my opinion, but I do think it's something that we need to be able to enable. Can I ask a side question as well? Um, I know um, some institutions have been using the cert certification tool. Has any, uh, in just terms of thinking about this similarly, is like, uh, I know I've been playing around with the certification tool in 19. Um, you can go through and issue a, a PDF certificate. Isn't that sort of in that direction where you could say, hey, students have earned this particular score on this item and they've finished these items. So please issue them the certificate of, you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah, yeah. That, and in many that, ways, that, 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 that print certificate is kind of the, the analog version of a, a badge. Um, but I think it's different in that um, it doesn't allow you to share it out to different social networks. You can't kind of display it. Um, you can display it on the wall, but you can't like display it electronically, at least not easily. Um, so we had actually talked about that. Would that be something that we'd want to build into the certification tool, that integration? Um, but it seemed to be um, maybe a couple different things going on. And, um, and so it seemed to make sense to just have an integration with a service that does kind of the whole thing. Um, and the certification could stay as a standalone thing. But I, I mean, I'm certainly open to whatever way of integrating it makes the most sense for, for end users. Yeah, Sean's mentioning that they use certification for required HR training and other institutional training so people can print them off and you know put them up on their walls
All right, so um, so I see a question, what are the next steps for this project? Uh, well, we would like to get at least the, um, the Credly one done because I know Marist was sort of lobbying for that one. Um, so unless someone has, you know, a, a strong preference for another platform, I would say that we would um, move forward with trying to gather uh, the resources to get this proposal done. Um, Josh, would you agree? Yeah, I'm still I'm still kind of weighing. I mean, I, I was I was really gung ho, but I, I my takeaway from today and Friday is that support for this is tepid, and so I'd want to get a better sense of you know what the ROI might be. And I, I in some ways I think that the the water is muddier for me now than it was before, which isn't to say that this couldn't go forward, but we just need to think hard because there are so many things that everyone is is very passionate about and this is clearly not one of them so maybe this ought to be a lower priority thing i don't know you know it's worthy of some more thought yeah i would encourage anybody who is um, very interested in badging to you know let us know and if your institution is willing to contribute any funding toward it um, that would be really important um, but I don't know if we'll be able to get this going uh, without a show of, of enthusiasm. So as much as I'd like to see it move forward, um, you know, I don't have big pockets personally. So <laughs> Dave's asking, can we have someone introduce how they use it in a TNL call? That's a good idea. Um, Sean, would you be willing to maybe talk about um, what you guys are doing at Western for for one of the calls. We can get you on the agenda. Not sure. Okay. Well we'll take that offline and we'll see um, see what we can do. We'll um you know, uh, update the group on on the future of this. Uh, again, I want to talk with the Marist folks and and see. I know they've they've been asking. You know, what's up with the Credly integration? Because they were hoping to have it um, in there. So um, hopefully we can move this forward. I think it's something that that people would like to see. It's maybe not as critical as some other things, but it's something that's certainly been around for a long time that people have asked for. And I don't think it's going to go away. I think, it, if anything, it's going to get to be more important as we move forward. So um, anyway, so we'll we'll return with updates um, as we know. But honestly, as far as next steps, Sean, I'm, I'm not sure at this point. Um, you know, maybe just get a little more feedback from other parties to see if um, if we can get enough momentum to move it forward. Um, we do have a few minutes left, and there are a couple of JIRAs on the um, agenda. One, I think Jolie had contributed. Oh, looks like it's the same one that I contributed. <laughs> I didn't realize those were the same. Um, it's about lessons. So if I could turn your attention to um, uh, the SAK41607, and I will paste it here into the chat. Um, this is about anonymous comments on lessons pages. So there was a bug, bug reported about um, the uh, com comments not being anonymous. Um, and there was a question about what's the desired behavior. So um, I think initially it was showing the name for everyone. Um, and so now it doesn't show, but it still shows up. It doesn't show to students, but it still shows up to um, the instructor. And then um, Bernardo had a comment saying that he thought that the instructor shouldn't see the name either, that it should be anonymous for everybody. Um, what would your sense be? I think um, like in assignments, there, if, if there's a need to do anonymous grading, maybe the instructor doesn't want to see the names. However, with comments, sometimes instructors do want to see the names um, so they know if someone's commenting inappropriately. These would be comments on pages. 
um, again. Uh, so, and comments can be graded. So that's kind of where that gray area comes in if you want to grade anonymously. Um, but what would people um, on this call uh, want the desired behavior behavior to be? Dave's this, asking what's the already existent behavior. Does, does this broker on any sort of um, sort of you know if I mean in one case if a student made a really really good comment but it's all set to anonymous and I have no idea then the hope is that as an instructor grading that comment I'm grading rather objectively. Um, if I know the student, on the other hand, um, that's grading the comment, then I may grade less objectively. Um, and I'm trying to sort of think this out. And is it, are we considering just the answer to the question by way of what the default is and that there could be settings or a feature request to, um, you know, make it so that, you know, you could see who it is or you can't? Um, not sure I believe that the current behavior, or at least in prior versions with this feature, was that the instructor saw the name. Mm. Um, and this would be a change to wow. remove the ability for the instructor to see the name. Um, that was my read of the JIRA. So the, the question is, do people want the instructor to be able to see the student name? Um, if not, if you want it to be truly anonymous, if that is the desired behavior, then we need to communicate that change out to people because it could come as a bit of a shock if they're used to seeing it um, in prior versions. Um, Terry's asking even if it's anonymous. Yeah, if you look at the screenshots, I believe it shows you um, like the, the instructor student content um, screenshot. It'll show you um, the name of the anonymous user, like in parentheses. So the instructor can still see who who belongs to which page and which comments come from which student, even though the students don't see that information. My question got split up. If a student that's anonymous and the instructor cannot see the name, they can still delete an inappropriate comment, like if the student, you know. Yes. Yeah. So that doesn't affect whether or not the the instructor can remove inappropriate content. It would. It just doesn't say who said that. Correct. Yeah. It's not a change in the the way the delete function works. It's just whether or not instructors see the names. But they couldn't penalize a student for being inappropriate either. No. It's also possible that students may be more fluid in their conversations and be more engaged with the conversation if they knew that they could actually, it's just the same, it's the same way with online courses, right? You have face-to-face -face courses, students don't raise their hand and engage in conversation. But if they knew that they were anonymous, that they might be more engaged in the conversation. And if it's for a grade, um, you know, then you may actually get better and deeper discussion. I, I think there's two different ways to go with this. I don't know if it's going to be super perfect, but I think I could go either way. Couldn't it be discretionary so that the instructor can say, this is a totally anonymous conversation or this is only anonymous between students? Um, currently, that's not how the feature works, so that would, I think, probably be a feature request to add another layer to it. Um, right now, it's kind of all or not. Um, but Charles makes a good point um, that the behavior you're describing, Terry, is what you have in forums. In forums, instructors see the names, even though it's set to anonymous. But there's also another option, a second option in forums to make them anonymous for the instructor as well. And it's broken out into a separate item. Yeah, in tests and quizzes, like if you do an anonymous survey, everything's anonymous to everybody. Right. All the time. Think, and I would think as well is if, if, if we did something, I think mimicking the same sort of behavior that's in forms would be appropriate where, you know, if you, if you set the comments to anonymous and they truly are anonymous, there's not a way to come back from that. Uh, in other words, you know, in forums, if you set them to anonymous, you can't you can't unanonymize them. They're just anonymous. <laughs> right, right. Inventing new words. <laughs> well, the reason I say that is because it helps to it helps to temper whether or not an instructor would want to set that that way. Because the basic yeah. premise then becomes if I set to anonymous and I can't 
de-anonymize, thanks Charles, if I can't do that, then I have to be okay with the fact that I'm gonna have to police potentially the discussion and remove things if necessary, because I won't be able to necessarily hold someone accountable for that, um, or just know that that's gonna be the way it is. Um, so. All right, so what would you guys recommend? You would recommend that it, it work like it does in forums where you could make it either way, depending on the instructor's prerogative? Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> does anybody else want to comment anonymously? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Big Blue Button doesn't give us the anonymous option. So. You could do the poll. <laughs> It does do anonymous if you do it in the shared notes, because you wouldn't know who's writing them. Ah, that's true. Interesting twist. I think ideally allowing the greatest flexibility would be the best option um, to allow it to be to kind of be a, a thing where the instructor could set the could call it the level of anonymity, mm -hmm. you know, an anonymous among students or completely anonymous agreed okay well I will comment on that Jira that we would like a, a, a third option <laughs> um, and so that may require another feature request I'm not sure but uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll put that comment on there so thank you guys for taking a look at it and it looks like we are almost out of time so does anybody have anything else that they would like to um, talk about before we wrap up today. I know Sean just posted a reminder about the UX call, which is right after this call at 11 a.m. in room three. And unfortunately, Sean, I won't be able to join you guys today. I have a conflicting meeting, but um, but it's always a good, it's like a Jira Palooza, but for UX. So I encourage um, folks that are interested to hop over to room three after this. All right. Well, thank you all, and um, we'll talk with you again in a couple of weeks. Have a great day.